Homer called Malta the center of the sea. Prehistory, with its primeval stone temples and tombs, it's part of the great Menia culture. After the Phoenicians and the Punie came the Romans, followed by the Arabs and the Normans. But it was the Knights of Malta who made the most indelible mark here. This island, situated in the heart of the Mediterranean, was important to both the Orient and the Occident. Valletta is also known as the City of Palaces. It's Malta's main city, full of historic buildings. In 1530, the Order of the Knights of Malta moved its main residence to this part of the island. In subsequent years, the city's defences were further developed. The St. John's Co-Cathedral was built in 1577 by Gerolama Casar as a monastic church of the Order of the Knights of Malta and its splendid interior was financed by the profits gained from hostilities mounted by the order against Muslim trading ships. The floor is particularly splendid. The medieval crusaders of Christianity left their traces everywhere. Elegant and well-preserved buildings, along with the island's traditional balconies, indicate that these were once the dwellings of the elite. Malta's proud capital city was one of the first in Europe to be officially planned and designed on a drawing board. The Grand Master's Palace is the order's largest building. Its mighty walls, set within the austere architecture of the 16th century, are adorned with wooden alcoves of Baroque design. The magnificent armory corridor, with its wall paintings and knight's armor, highlights the order's power and magnificence. The weapons and armor for 25,000 soldiers were once stored here, and several items have survived to the present day. The harbor is one of the largest natural harbors in the world. It has been used for three millennia. Strong fortress walls rise up above the sea, surrounded by mighty surf. After the order had succeeded in fending off the Turks, following the great siege of 1565, the Grand Master Jean de la Valette ordered that the entire island be fortified and Fort St. Elmo be built. The War Museum is located in the northwestern section of the fort. The Sacra Infirmeria and its 160 meter long ward was the hospital for the Knights of St. John. The island's only theatre is one of the oldest in Europe and is still in use today. And there's a particularly special attraction, Malta's old-timer bus service. The St. Paul's Shipwreck Church was designed by Girolama Casar. It is dedicated to the legendary shipwreck of Paul the Apostle. The Pieta and Sliema yacht harbours are visible from the mighty walls of Valletta. These suburbs were founded less than a hundred years ago. Excursion boats embark from Sliema Bay. The natural harbour and fortified city are an equally impressive sight when viewed from the sea.
Small fishing boats float peacefully on the calm water of the bay and awake an image of old Venice. It's as though time has stood still. This tiny spit of land, Bergu, today's Vittoriosa, was one of the order's first settlements and the perfect location for the defense of the harbor. On its landward side, Vittoriosa is protected by a mighty wall. The town has entered through the Provence Gate. When the Knights of St. John first obtained their fiefdom from the Spanish monarchy, the Fort St. Angelo was a tiny fortress. It was subsequently expanded and improved. Malta became Europe's great Christian bastion of defense. The Senglia Peninsula is one of the three cities, small and peaceful and of great historical importance. Churches, palatial buildings, shady steps and arcades situated alongside the water's edge are an impressive sight. Although it has few tourist attractions, Sengde is probably the most beautiful city in Malta, with its many pretty balconies and almost non-existent traffic. The settlement played an important role during the great siege of Valletta in 1565. Situated at the entrance to the harbour, Calcara is the island's third city, with a calm picture postcard bay and beautiful buildings lined up along the quay. Heavy bombing caused a great deal of damage during the Second World War, but most of the city's buildings that were affected were rebuilt according to their original design. The island's traditional fishing boat, the Luzzi, is manufactured here. And modern yachts are also built in various small, privately owned shipyards. In 1797, the last Grand Master of Malta, Ferdinand von Hompisch, granted Zaba a town charter and gave it the title Sita de Hompisch. The Santa Maria de Grazia Church was also funded by the Order of St. John in gratitude for their salvation from the Great Siege and to honor the Holy Virgin Mary. Construction work took more than a hundred years, which perhaps explains a certain lack of harmony in the architecture. Malta's largest prehistoric temple site is situated in Tashin. It consists of three interconnected buildings. The remains of the religious sanctuary were discovered in 1914. Local farmers stumbled across huge blocks of stone while ploughing their fields. Malta's temples are older than the Egyptian pyramids. This tiny Mediterranean island is a veritable archaeological treasure trove. Mazachloch, the prettiest fishing village in Malta. A rural idyll in the south of the island. Each day, a picturesque market takes place on the quay. A large variety of produce is on sale here, especially vegetables and fruit, 
and of course, fresh fish straight from the fishing boats. Mazascala on the east coast is a popular holiday resort. A long bay protects the harbour in which many colourful fishing boats lie at anchor. Numerous renovated houses are located around the bay, with images of saints on the walls, traditional balconies and rush mats to protect from the sun's rays. The existence of the prehistoric site of Hadshaim had long been in the history books. But scientific excavation of the rocky terrain began here much later, in the middle of the 19th century. The temple area and those of its rocks that have been partially decorated with geometrical forms extends across an area of several hundred meters. These massive rocks raise the question of how those who brought them to the location were able to transport such heavy material here 4,500 years ago. Below Hadjaim are the ruins of Menidra. This is the only prehistoric site in Malta, and its formations appear to contain a precise alignment with the stars. Only when the hours of both day and night are identical does the light of the rising sun shine into the far corner of the sanctuary. The old city of Medina sits regally upon a high plateau in the center of the island. In Arabic, Medina means a place of religion. The old Punier settlement was transformed into a fortress by the Arabs. Here they sat in judgment of the people. The old and dignified center of the Maltese nobility now stands proud amid the hustle and bustle of the island's tourists. Today, several palaces are still owned by various of Malta's old families. Following a devastating earthquake in 1693 that also damaged the old bishop's seat, most of the town was once again completely rebuilt. During the era of British colonial rule, the town fell into relative obscurity for 130 years until the world's tourist industry came knocking on its door. Today, only 500 people live here in what is tantamount to being an open-air museum. They still cling to their age-old traditions. The Dingley Cliffs are a fascinating sight. A steep sloped rocky coastline on the western shore, close to Medina. Mosta is situated in the middle of the island, a busy small town with a famous landmark, Mosta Cathedral. Its dome is the third largest in Europe. Its interior can accommodate a congregation of 12,000. 
Both its generous dimensions and fine use of traditional Maltese decoration are most impressive. During the Second World War, a miracle took place here. A bomb crashed through the dome during mass. However, it failed to explode and no one was injured. It's difficult to believe that this building was constructed by local villagers rather than by a team of professional architects. The rugged southern coast of Malta contains small fjord-like features and numerous grottos. The most spectacular of these is the Blue Grotto. When the weather is suitable, experienced guides take passengers on small boats into the grotto by way of a narrow canyon. The calm scene of tiny fishing boats and nets hanging out to dry can be deceptive. The small bays around St. Julian are the centre of the island's nightlife. St. Paul's Bay is located in the north of the island. In 1985, this was a tiny fishing harbour. But today, thousands of people live here, and tens of thousands of holidaymakers ensure that it stays well awake throughout the entire year. Sandy beaches alternate with a craggy coastline. The shoreline has a profusion of hotels, restaurants, bars and souvenir shops. A little further north on the western side of the island and hidden within a steeply sloped bay is the village of Popeye. In 1980, Hollywood made a movie about the famous comic strip hero Popeye the Sailor. In this fishing village of misshapen houses, Popeye discovered Newfoundland, or as he called it, Sweet Haven. This was the setting for his colourful adventures. Construction of the set took more than seven months. 165 workers used eight tons of nails and 9,000 liters of paint. After the film crews left the village, it became a popular tourist attraction. So much so that it's been rebuilt twice following two devastating fires. Gozo, Malta's smaller sister a green agricultural island with an easy-going lifestyle and the island of Calypso where Odysseus once lived. One of the prettiest villages on Gozo is Garb whose Baroque parish church dominates the main square. Here it's as though time really has stood still. Its ancient lanes and houses are reminiscent of the time when Ottoman pirates invaded the island and enslaved most of its inhabitants. Green hills as far as the eye can see. There it is in the distance, the splendid Jagra church. Most of the people here are strict Catholics and the church plays an important role in their daily lives. Even the smallest villages have a relatively large church. A well-preserved windmill indicates the production of corn of which the order of the Knights of Malta once had a monopoly. One of the most impressive and oldest prehistoric temples in Malta is situated on the island of Gozo, the Gigantija Temple. The 
As with each of Malta's other prehistoric temples, between 3,600 to 3,000 years BC, people worshipped stone idols and sacrificed animals in Gigantija. And where did this amazing prehistoric people go after they had abandoned this region in around 2500 BC? It's one of Malta's many hidden secrets. Tapinu, a place of both worship and healing. The church stands out from the beautiful landscape and is the most important place of pilgrimage on the Maltese islands. On the 22nd of June 1883, a farmer's wife is said to have heard the voice of the Virgin Mary who ordered her to pray. Shortly afterwards, a friend also heard the voice. Together they prayed for his sick mother who unexpectedly recovered shortly afterwards. Thus, an increasing number of people came to Tapinu. With the assistance of generous donations from Maltese expatriates around the world, this church was built on the site of a small chapel. Wuerkra Lake is separated from the sea by high cliffs. Small motorboats are used to transport passengers through a narrow gap to the open sea. The rocky walls are in stark yet attractive contrast to the deep blue of the sea. Where possible, the boats venture into various caves. Suddenly, the main attraction on this part of the island appears. The Azure Window. Here, erosion has created a huge natural wall. A mighty ledge with pillars that creates the illusion of a window. The landscape here is constantly changing due to the breaking up of the rocks. However, natural erosion is creating a fascinating landscape. The modest village of Jukisha has a large church whose dome is almost as large as that in Mostar on the main island of Malta. Seventy-five meters tall, the dome is a replica of the Longinus Santa Maria della Salute in Venice. The inhabitants of the village took 20 years to construct this house of God. They started by building around an existing parish church that was eventually dismantled. But the side walls, altar and various carved stone angels were preserved and can still be seen today. Although the island's main town of Victoria Rabat is now the financial and cultural centre of the island, it has managed to retain the relaxed atmosphere of a small rural community. An ancient hill settlement here is said to date back to the 3rd century BC. Roman rule brought both freedom to the city and also administrative autonomy. The Byzantines expanded the small citadel with additional fortifications. The Arabs enlarged the fortified castle and the Crusaders created a cathedral. This archipelago 
that is located between the continents of Europe and Africa is the junction of both past and present. Many people and cultures have left their traces here. An open-air museum beneath the shining sun, Malta, a tantalizing pearl set in the very heart of the Mediterranean. <laughs> 